four, three, two, one, cue. Cue, David. Cue. These things sure have had a big impact on us, haven't they? When I saw my first compact audio cassette in the 60s, I muscled up all my book learning and said, you'll never get it good enough for music. So much for book learning. My mistake was in underestimating technology. Recorded music starts out as electric wiggles. And recording those wiggles on tape is done with electromagnetism. The tape itself is a formulation of ferrous material. Uh, ferrous meaning that it can be magnetized. It's glued onto a flexible plastic ribbon. Early tapes used ordinary rust as the ferrous material. The ribbon is passed by an electromagnet that looks like this, a metal semicircle with a coil of wire wound around it. Now at every instant, the small section of tape that's in the gap becomes part of a closed magnetic circuit. The electric wiggles produce a wiggling magnetic field that leaves a magnetized pattern on the passing tape. Now it's, it's pretty difficult to visualize the information on the tape. The textbook wants you to imagine a whole mess of tiny bar magnets. Where the tape has no magnetism, the magnets point in random directions. Magnetizing the tape, more or less, arranges the directions, more or less. This gets confusing and messy, so I'm going to stick to a more graphical format. Replaying the tape is a matter of reversing the process. This is a real tape head, by the way. No, the tape recorder's a little smoother. Now, there were two reasons I made my ill-fated prediction about music on cassettes. The first has to do with the gap in the head. As the wiggles pass the gap in, in playback, the, they introduce electrical wiggles in the coil of wire. Now, any wiggle that's smaller than the gap effectively disappears by canceling itself out. Small wiggles represent higher frequency sounds. And the classic way to record higher frequencies on a tape was to move the tape very fast, spread those wiggles out. It was 30 inches per second in studio machines, and at least seven and a half inches per second in home recorders. The compact audio cassette was de designed to run at a pokey one and seven eighths inches per second. Now my other ill-founded quality concern had to do with the widths of the recorded tracks. The wider the track, the more magnetism there is to make more wiggling current. That means more signal, less noise. Studio machines, used a full-width track that was a quarter of an inch wide. The cassette not only used eighth-inch wide tape, but it put four tracks, each one of them one thirty-second of an inch wide, on that small tape. Four tracks. Now you see, stereo demands two parallel tracks. They're drawn on the tape by a double head. The cassette was designed to be flipped over, used in the other direction as well. There really is no other side of the tape. Now, from everything I knew about magnetic recording, getting a good signal from the cassette looked hopeless. No one told me that tape coatings and magnetic head technology was going to improve a hundredfold. I guess I'm not on the right mailing lists. Cassettes still require extra steps in the manufacturing process compared to records, but that too has come a long way. The album is prepared by recording it on a one inch wide tape with four tracks. Two stereo tracks going forward and two going backwards. Exactly the same as they'll appear on the final cassette. The one inch tape is put on a special player and formed into an endless loop. The tape loop plays back over and over, and its contents are recorded onto big spools of eighth inch wide tape. The recordings are all done at 64 times normal speed. The eighth inch tape receives all four tracks simultaneously. Every time the big loop goes around once, a beep is put on the eighth inch tape. At normal play speed, the beep is only eight cycles per second. But you sometimes hear it as a low flutter at one end of a tape. There's also a quality control on some tapes. Here's where the tape meets the cassette. The cassettes are C0s, no tape inside, just a short plastic leader. The loading machine grabs the short loop of plastic leader and attaches the big spool to one end of it. 
The machine winds tape into the box until it hears the beep that tells it that one full album of songs has been installed. Then it attaches the end of the tape to the other dangling piece of leader. The cassette is finished and on its way to be printed, boxed, and labeled. Music to go. I think from now on I'm going to stick to real safe predictions. They'll never get it good enough for video. Oh yeah. Okay. They'll never get it to cure the common cold. <laughs>